Determined to bring down at least one of these sculptures, Jinwoo pulls a sword and orders them to bring it on. Jinwoo is flung around as the statues begin to viciously assault him. Jinwoo muses about how he has always been the weakest as he fights for his life. Though he has frequently been made fun of for it, he has always made an effort. Jinwoo yells in pain as these unrelenting statues chop off one of his arms. Jinwoo is enraged that despite his best efforts to get stronger, it had to come to this conclusion. He is thrashed around and in further pain by the statues. Jinwoo keeps thinking about how he gave it his all to go this far, even though he didn't succeed in getting stronger. Jinwoo tries to give another angry shout, but he gets stabbed through the chest and is unable to even do that. Even though Jinwoo is barely alive, thinking about the first few individuals to flee the altar makes him feel enraged. They claim they could take it no longer, but Jinwoo makes the point that everyone had similar feelings, thus they were only rationalizing their own avarice. The most self-centered individuals always stand to gain the most, hence their purported appreciation was fake. Rage feels him even more as he thinks about how he has family too and he wants to make it home alive just like they did. Jinwoo starts to question whether it's actually a good thing that he's the only one who has to die as he cries in agony as these statues torment him even more. He considers himself a hypocrite and asks how he could have thought that way as Jinwoo's shredded body lies on the altar. Jinwoo struggles to breathe. He considers how much he wants to live. Jinwoo loses all hope and wishes he could try again before the last blow hits him. As the last blue flame extinguishes, an enigmatic notification appears divulging the completion of a covert mission known as Courage of the Week. It requests approval after meeting the requirements to become a player. If the player presses the yes button and it is not accepted, their heart will stop beating in an instant. Jinwoo is startled to see that he still has his arm when he wakes up at a hospital at that very moment. He discovers that he still has Hisselgassel and recalls how he was severed. He starts to question whether it was all just a dream because there are no signs from the time he was stabbed in the chest. Dream. At that moment, a man by the name of Wu shows there and introduces himself as the manager of the surveillance team for the Hunters Association. Kong is the purple-haired person with spikes. Although they don't say why they are there, they do disclose that Jin was spent three days in a state of unconsciousness. Juhi and Song Kai are still alive as well, but Song Kai did lose his arm, so he might have to give up being a hunter. Ju Xi is receiving mental health treatment since he was severely traumatized. Wu doesn't think she will stay a hunter, though, because she isn't doing well. That day, they found a double dungeon, and just six individuals made it out alive. Even while working as a hunter is always extremely dangerous, catastrophic events like the one that occurred that day are not often seen. And here's something very peculiar. After the survivors alerted another guild to the situation, all that was discovered by them was Jin Wu. The temple and the statues that the survivors had mentioned vanished completely. Everything about this is so improbable. If not for the perfect coincidence of the stories, suspicion would have been directed towards the survivors. Wu has the hypothesis, though, and that isn't the case. He asks Jin Wu, turning to face him, if he has had a second awakening. According to Wu, a hunter's power is predetermined from the moment of awakening and does not alter thereafter. Nonetheless, a hunter may experience a second waking in extremely uncommon circumstances. He can surpass their prior restrictions and reach A or perhaps S rank thanks to this unusual occurrence. When Jin Wu hears this, he becomes very enthusiastic and says he brought a monometer to see how strong Jin Wu is. Wu considers how a low-level hunter could not have survived if they had indeed encountered an incessal-level magic beast, as the survivors claimed. Since there was not a single monster remnant in the area, a formidable hunter had to be there. Wu concludes that Jin Wu's second waking is the most plausible explanation. Jin Wu is excited to get the results of his mana test, but they are not favorable. Wu clarifies that they are leaving after realizing their error. Even E rankers often receive a score of at least 70, but Jin Wu only managed to receive a 10. In essence, Jin Wu becomes a civilian with a score of 10. The reason Jin Wu survived is still unknown because the dungeon has sadly disappeared and cannot be found again. Jin Wu is dissatisfied with the entire exchange, but she is curious as to why the boys neglected to inquire about the object that was hovering in midair. He discovers it's a touch panel and wonders whether he's the only one who can see it. Wu is thinking about the message he got about becoming a footballer when his sister interrupts him. He only apologizes and requests to view the panel because she was rather concerned about him. Since he can't see it, he asks her whether she is familiar with how most games open messages. Jin Wu tells her that she used to play games all the time, even though she believes he has gone insane. 
She provides him with the apparent response as he just, he must check his email. At that moment, a notice appears, informing Jinwoo that he has been assigned a daily task strength training. Our boy opens up a ton of these panels after Gina departs. They disclose that the system is intended to support the player's progress, and that disobedience to the rules could result in penalties. Incentives have also been sent, but Jinwoo is clueless about the significance of any of this. Jinwoo verifies his daily mission and finds multiple ghosts to aim for when performing push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and sprints. On the other hand, there will be consequences if the daily quest is not finished. Given that he is in the hospital and lacks the energy for anything, Jinwoo starts to question whether this is all a joke. Wu informs the chairman outside that Jinwoo does not appear to have experienced a second awakening. There are still a lot of unsolved questions surrounding the entire occurrence. Thus it will be classified as a special case and investigated further. Another portal opens elsewhere, and people wish the hunters would arrive sooner. As the clock strikes midnight, Jinwoo is sound sleeping at the hospital. He doesn't finish his objective, according to a notification, and the ground starts to tremble. Jinwoo is frightened to see a gigantic caterpillar creature when he unexpectedly finds himself in a desert. He receives another notice, informing him that he has been assigned a punishment quest with a 4-hour survival time limit. When the nurses return to the hospital, Jinwoo is nowhere to be seen. Our boys are running for their lives in some other reality. The enormous caterpillar is getting closer to him. Wu still has two hours left, as if that weren't awful enough. The staff in the hospital are still looking for him. Now that he's back with Jinwoo, he's running himself into the ground and doesn't have much more time. Just as the caterpillar is about to capture him, Jinwoo finds himself back in the hospital because his time is up. He successfully completes the penalty mission, according to a notification. But Jinwoo just throws up and collapses. He is given yet another reward. But our boys are completely lost. Later on, Jinwoo informs his sister that he is recovering nicely and may soon be able to return home. But for now, he puts on his nicest tracksuit and goes outside. Juhei gets a request to participate in a raid since a Darren Kate has shown up somewhere else. Though Juhei can't convince herself to go, the other females aren't free. But Juhei is informed that Jinwoo has come out of his coma, which is fantastic news. When Juhei visits him with anxiety, several nurses note that he's back to running, as he has been since waking up. Outside, Jinwoo muses on the four days that have passed since he regained consciousness and the lessons he has learned. Firstly, the pop-up windows are not a hallucination. Also, he receives three different kinds of gifts when doing the daily objective. One is complete recuperation, which he currently employs to overcome his running fatigue. Ability points come next. He is free to allocate the points to any skill he likes. He increases his strength a little bit for the time being, and he can really see that he is stronger now. In addition, he has inventory and skill screens. Jinwoo pauses to consider how bizarre his life has suddenly become before pointing out how much it resembles the video game. While Jinwoo was fiddling with all of his screens, he was unaware that everyone else in the room was simply staring at him. A random loot box is the final daily quest reward for Jinwoo. The odd object of the day is a mystery key. This key comes as a big surprise because up until now, he has only received insignificant items like bandages and pens. A message appears with the location indicating that the key is for teleporting to an instance dungeon. Although Jinwoo has no idea what an instance dungeon is, he infers from the events thus far that it would be an event to help him become stronger, since opening gates is a regular occurrence in this world. A gate report is even included on the news to keep track of all the gates that have lately opened. When Jin Wu visits his mother, he remembers seeing her unconscious. It was found that she suffers from ultimate rest, another name for internal sleep illness. There are ideas that link the sickness, which emerged with the opening of the gates, to repeated exposure to mana. For individuals in need, life support is the best that contemporary medicine can offer. Jin Wu put a lot of effort into saving money before becoming a licensed hunter. He told Gina that their mother's medical care would soon be within their budget, but she was concerned about the level of danger associated with hunting. Jin Wu begged her to trust him with everything and reassured her that everything will be alright from now on. But Jin Wu would soon find out that he was worthless in combat, and as a result, he would never receive a share of the spoils. However, because Jin Wu is working hard to train his body, things have changed. By asserting his dominance over an apple, he chooses his path forward and allocates all of his ability points to strength. Jin Wu, resolved to become stronger, goes to the address provided in the important notification. Jin Wu has everything he needs ready and decides to flee if things get bad, just like they did during the attack. 
Jinwoo muses on how he used to be unable to defeat even an E-rank beast, but now he has to solo a whole dungeon. Though he questions his ability, he comes to the conclusion that there is nothing else he can do. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please do show us love by subscribing to the channel. Click on the video on the screen for more contents like this.